Okay, I finally watched <laughs> The Little Mermaid. Okay, the live action remake of The Little Mermaid, which came out earlier this year, 2023. This one was directed by Rob Marshall, uh, known as a musical director. He directed Chicago, that one best picture back in 2002. Uh, directed several other films uh, for Disney. He previously directed musical wise. He directed Into the Woods, Mary Poppins Returns. Two musicals I think are great movies, especially their soundtracks. And he also directed Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, which is kind of like a weird outlier in his filmography. And that's like the weakest one in that franchise. So, yeah, probably not a good mix for Rob Marshall, the musical director to do Pirates of the Caribbean. But that's a different video for another day. So this is the latest live action Disney remake. And I'm now at a point where I'm burned out by these live action Disney remakes. Like, yeah, there's some live action remakes I've liked in the past. And I still like some of them. Cinderella, the 2016 Jungle Book, Christopher Robin, Cruella, just to name a few. I'm getting to the point where, you know, they're milking this idea to death. And most of them just seem like cheap cash grabs where they just want to make it for the sake of making cheap money. And so, and a lot of them feel like dumbed down versions of the animated movies that I'm like, why, why do these movies even need to be made? I don't get that. So the little mermaid, I mean, I was open to seeing it when it was announced Trailers came out, and I'm like, this movie doesn't really look that good. I don't really have an interest in seeing it. Comments were made about comparing it between it and the animated film. That kind of soured my anticipation on this movie. So I'm like, okay, I may get to the point from now on. I don't plan on seeing a live-action remake in theaters from now on. I'm burned out by it. Unless it's like a rare exception. Um. Like, if it's a remake that I feel like earns the fact that it needs to be remade, like one of their lesser movies, I might be more open to it. But The Little Mermaid, yeah, I'm not interested in seeing that. I will uh, I was going to see that on Disney+. Plus, So I watched it on Disney+. Plus. I was open to it, obviously. But I didn't have my, my hopes up. Because I think the reviews for it were mixed. I think some people liked it. Other people didn't. So I'm like, we'll see. So what do I think about this movie? Well, you probably know the synopsis of The Little Mermaid, but just in case you don't, uh, Ariel, the youngest of King Triton's daughters and the most defiant, longs to find out more about the world beyond the sea. And while visiting the surface, falls for the dashing Prince Eric. With mermaids forbidden to interact with humans, Ariel makes a deal with the evil sea witch Ursula, which gives her a chance to experience life on land, which ultimately places her life and her father's crown in jeopardy. So, I, like I said, I was not really super excited to see this movie. This was one that wasn't high on my anticipation list. I think when we did the May 2023 preview on Ryan Cam's Life in the Movies podcast, I gave this like a one out of five because I was so burned out on the live action remakes. And then my friend Henry Mockingbird, he did like a big old rant on his channel and he thought the film was hot and garbage and said it was as bad as the Lion King remake. So I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I don't, we'll see. I don't know if the movie's going to be that bad, but we'll see. Uh, I think this movie, it's complicated because there's a couple things I like about this movie. One of them is Halle Bailey. And she got some hard crap on this role. Uh, like people didn't like that she was cast in the film. And then you had your trolls who were like, oh, the uh, original Ariel was white and you cast a black woman. Like, that's awful. Why would you do that? And they did the whole thing about race swapping and they thought it was racist that they did that. And I'm like, I, I don't care who you cast as Ariel. I'm like, the mermaids are fantastical creatures like you don't have to have race be defined since you're playing a mermaid like you could have like a latino woman a asian woman you could have a 
black woman, white woman, I don't care you cast as Ariel. I mean, as long as you're a good actress, you can sing. I don't care what ethnicity you are. And I thought Halle Bailey did a terrific job. She's like one of the best things about this movie. So uh, the controversy surrounding her casting, I thought, was absolutely ridiculous. And I, like I said, I thought she did a good job considering it was like her first real big acting role. She sings beautifully. Like one of the things I respect about like she she sang the heck out of these songs. Like part of your world. Like I I wasn't a real big fan on the soundtrack in general, but whenever Halle Bailey sang, it was epic. Uh part of your world. And then there was a new song written for the film called For the First Time. And I thought she delivered it there as well. Uh, so I actually did really like her performance. Uh, I think she captured the spirit of what made Ariel such a likable character in the animated film. Uh, I don't think she topped what Jody Benson provided, obviously. But I think she held her own, and I did really like her performance. And then I didn't mind the relationship with Eric. They fleshed that out a little bit in this movie. And I bought the chemistry between the two actors. I think they flesh out Eric's character a little bit in the remake. I didn't mind what they did with it. I like that Eric had a new song called uh, While in Jordan Waters. Even though the song feels a lot like Evermore from the Beauty and the Beast remake. But I still thought it was a pretty good song all around. So that those are aspects I, I liked. And then whenever it was on land, I did like the cinematography in the film. But that's where all my positives lie. I do have a lot of issues with this film. Uh, for one, the film looks very cheap, especially when we're underwater. With the underwater stuff in this movie, I did not fully buy in this film. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that a year prior to the release of this movie, Disney through 20th Century Fox released Avatar The Way of Water, directed by James Cameron. And that movie looked visually phenomenal, especially with the underwater sequences in that movie. So my, there's no excuse for The Little Mermaid to look the way that it did, considering we just got Avatar The Way of Water. There are shots in this movie where it didn't even look like the characters were underwater. <laughs> It, it didn't, it looked very artificial. And it took me out of the movie because of that. It's like these uncanny shots of these characters moving around. And it's supposed to be underwater. I'm, I don't buy the illusion because it looks so fake and so cheap in comparison to what I previously saw in Avatar The Way of Water. So that took me out of it. I think they tried to, uh, I mean, it's pretty much the same story as the animated film. It does issues that I have with other live action remakes where it copies the original film beat by beat. I would, I would compare it with the Lion King remake on that level. Uh, but for some reason, the movie is like, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes longer than the animated film. And yet the stuff they stretch out into it adds nothing to the story. And then the stuff they add to the story makes the overall story dumber. Like, they add this plot thread in this remake where Ariel, when she makes a deal with the sea witch, Ursula, and she loses her voice, whenever she thinks about Eric, she has amnesia all of a sudden and forgets about him. And... I'm like, okay, on paper, that could work. But however, the movie suddenly forgets that they have that plot line uh, during the time that Ariel is on land and she's mute. Because, you know, she's still close to kissing Eric during they do the kiss the girl thing. And uh, Ursula still does the transformation into Vanessa with Ariel's voice to hypnotize Eric. They do that thing again. And even that whole that whole addition for one adds nothing to the story. And two, it makes the movie and Ursula's plot dumber. Like it makes Ursula dumber because she's like, oh, 
I set this up, but we do nothing with it, and I'm still going to do it forgetting about what I originally set up. So, yeah, that adds nothing to the overall film. Um, most of the cast, like, the main casting I like, but the casting around it, like, none of the other actors didn't really deliver for me personally. Like, they cast uh, David Diggs as Sebastian, and to me, he just felt like, wasted potential because all he's doing is a poor imitation of the original voice and he does nothing for me i hated the design of sebastian too like they make him too photorealistic and sebastian lost all of the personality that made him so much fun in the animated film uh they also have aquafina as scuttle in this movie and yeah i'm not really that big on that the humor surrounding Aquafina in this movie was very cringe and Scuttle lacked the charm that made the character fun in the original film when Scuttle was voiced by Buddy Hackett. Ursula. I got to talk about Ursula. Uh, I think casting, when I'm now, I heard they cast Melissa McCarthy. I saw a red flag coming because I'm like, Melissa McCarthy is Ursula. Really? Why would you do that? And they cast her as Ursula. And I'm like, that was a big mistake. Uh, for one, could not take her seriously in this role. Um, all, all she pretty much did, much like my issues with Sebastian, it just came off as like a cheap imitation of the original voice actress. And the character's not even scary this time. Like with Melissa McCarthy, I just saw this like uncanny valley CGI blob creature with cringe humor. And I did not care for her performance in this movie. And, uh, make it worse, she can't even sing that good. Because her version of Poor Unfortunate Soul was super, super cringe. So I did not care for her. Uh, Javier Bardem as King Triton. Like, he's okay. But it just felt like he was sleepwalking for the movie. Like, he doesn't really have much personality in the character. It just seemed like an easy role to phone in just to get an easy paycheck. That's how I felt when watching his performance. They also uh, they they also waste his talents too because uh, if you've seen the movie La La Crocodile, Javier Bardem is actually a really good performer and singer, and they should have had him sing in this movie. And I think they had a song they were gonna do for his character, but it was cut from the movie, and that was a big missed opportunity there. I would have loved to have seen what that song would have been. Speaking of musical wise, musical numbers are staged very awkwardly. Uh, there's some musical numbers that I liked. Uh, I liked the new songs for the most part that were written, added into the film. The new songs were written by Lin Manuel Miranda. And like I said, I liked Wild Uncharted Waters and for the first time. They keep most of the original songs from uh, Alan Menken and Howard Ashman, like Part of Your World in the film, Under the Sea, Kiss the Girl, Point Fortune. So the main songs are in the film. And the only song that worked for me out of that bunch was Part of Your World because, like I said, Halle Bailey had the chops and she sung her heart out uh, the two times she sung the song in the movie. Under the Sea did not work because they tried replicating what the animated film did with these, anim with these C in this case, CGI characters dancing underwater, and yet it lacked what made the original song so much fun. And here it's just these CGI creatures awkwardly dancing underwater, and it lacked the it lacked it lacked the energy of the original film, and it, I just felt awkward watching it. Same thing with Kiss the Girl. Kiss the Girl had no energy in the live action film, and it just came off as awkward. Even Aquafina trying to sing along, no, I didn't care for Poor Fortunate Souls. The worst offender, though, this is a new song. Uh, this song is embarrassing. There's a song in this movie called The Scuttlebutt. And The Scuttlebutt is hot garbage. Like, if there's one thing I absolutely hated about this movie, that is The Scuttlebutt. It is a pure abomination of a song. Don't know what Lin Manuel was thinking on that one. You keep this song and you cut whatever song you had written for King Triton, Javier Bardem. Like, what were you thinking, man? It is like the cringiest thing I've heard in a long time. It's one of the most annoying songs. And it's a contender for one of the worst songs that Disney Studios ever been involved with. Like, 
it's on par with some of the worst songs in a directed video sequels. Like this song is awful. I, I cannot stand that. But yeah, The Little Mermaid, I think I've rambled on this film long enough. I didn't hate the film. There's some redeeming qualities about it. I don't think it's on par with some of the worst live action remakes. But I'd put it on a similar level as the Lion King remake. I didn't hate the Lion King remake either. But it was still a very unnecessary movie that adds nothing to justify its existence. And I feel the same way with The Little Mermaid. Uh, there's redeeming stuff in it, but it does nothing to enhance the original film or make it better. Uh, the film does feel like it was made just to cash in, like most of these live-action remakes. And yeah, I like Halle Bailey. I like, like, the romance was done fine, but it's still a very lackluster film in the live action remakes. It's not one I'll rewatch again. If I watch the little mermaid, I'm going to watch the animated film. That film is far better. And it has all the personality, charm and emotion. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That uh, the little mermaid lacks this remake lacks. And honestly, uh, if, I mean, if you like this movie, I think some people do more power to you, but this is another one where I just did not care for. And it's uh, one of the, to me, one of the lesser remakes that Disney has done. But it's not their worst. But still not enough for me to go fresh. I end up going two out of five on The Little Mermaid. And the film on the 100 point scale, I'm giving it a 36 out of 100. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of The Little Mermaid. Aquafina was a terrible addition to the cast. The character sucked. The movie was too long. Yeah. The movie did not need to be two hours and 15 minutes. They do. Uh, and yeah, I didn't care for Aquafina either. Like Scuttlebutt is like the worst thing about the movie. But to me, the worst casting was Melissa McCarthy as Ursula. I, I, I did not like her in that movie. And then Mike also says, I like the expansion on Eric's character, but his songs were great. Yeah, I liked, I liked his song, but and his character, I thought, was well handled. But, again, it's all a matter of, am I going to watch the animated film more or the live action film? It's going to be the animated film any day of the week. 